Oh, I got a special treat for you guys today. So, um, recently my mom was clearing out some old stuff and she found all of our old VHS tapes that had like movies and TV shows and stuff. And, um, she was going to get rid of them. And I said, what are you crazy? Give them to me. <laughs> um, so I have two boxes of old VHS tapes and we're going to look at them. Uh, this isn't everything we had. Um, I, I, I kind of already know what's in these boxes, although it's, uh, a little bit of time has passed since then. And uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while because I need these off of my floor. So um, these are mostly movies and stuff. Uh, like I said, this is not everything that we had. Uh, I went through the um, tapes pretty briefly and uh, I took only the ones that I wanted to take. There was other stuff, like stuff that belonged to my dad. Like, my dad was really into westerns, so there was a whole bunch of western VHS tape, like all the John Wayne movies and everything. But um, I grabbed all the ones that I wanted, and uh, we're going to look at them. I have two boxes of these. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. Hopefully, this is going to be interesting for people. Uh, what's interesting is I just recently watched uh, James Rolfe do his video on VHS memories. And uh, it was a really good video, very relatable to someone like me. So uh, I think this is a good time to finally go through these. By the way, these are all um, these are all like movies and TV shows. Nothing animated, which is very unusual for someone like me. Uh, I have all I I already took all my animated VHS tapes and they're on the wall over there. I was gonna do a video on those. If my main channel Rob the Wonderful gets to ten thousand subs, I'm gonna do a video on my DVD and VHS animation collection. So go over there and subscribe if you haven't already. Today we're just going to look at movies and talk about them, I guess, uh, depending on what um, what we got in here. All right, let's crack it open. It's like opening the Ark of the Covenant. Ah, oh boy, we already got some good stuff in here. Um, let's start with this one. <laughs> Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Christmas comedy. Uh, fun fact about me in this movie. Um, this was the first movie I ever watched at a drive-in. Yeah, uh, there are still drive-ins around the country. There's one here in South Florida, which I went to uh, before I even moved to South Florida. We were with family, and we went to go see this. Uh, I love this movie. <laughs> it's not one of the best, but it's definitely very memorable. Uh, very relatable, too, because it was about, like, the... The, the Christmas rush and, you know, getting getting the toy that all the kids wanted and, you know, all the craziness that ensues with that. There's not really a whole lot of other movies like that that capture that very specific thing. But, um, yeah, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jingle All the Way, I like it. There's, there's, there's Turbo Man right there. They make Turbo Man action figures. They made one recently, actually. I still see them at Walmart occasionally, so that was kind of neat. Uh, I probably won't do a whole lot of time on these, um, just because, you know, we're just looking at the tapes. But, um, yeah, Sinbad was in this, uh, Phil Hartman was in this, um, bunch of, uh, yeah, very, 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 very funny movie. There was a scene where Arnold Schwarzenegger fought a reindeer. So there you go, that's what, what more could you possibly want? Let me adjust the microphone a little bit. Okay, there we go. Anyway, that's, um... Jingle all the way. We're off to a good start. Oh, God. So, um, might as well go through what's on here. These are mostly, like, the clamshell VHS tapes, the big foam things for the kids' movies. But uh, I have a couple other things here. Let's go through these real quick. Just Kidding, Volume 1 and Volume 2. So, these were advertised as seen on TV. These were, like, a prank show or something. And, um... I think they were from Europe or something, but like, uh, I remember like thinking like, oh, that could be funny. Let's, let's, let's order those and check them out. And they were funny for about 10 seconds <laughs> because, uh, so the thing is they would pull pranks on people, but they would keep showing the pranks over and over and over to different people that they played the pranks to. And it got very old. And to be fair, some of the pranks were pretty good. Like there's one where they were at like a, I think it was like a public pool or something. And some people were going to open up a locker. And they, they had a guy inside the locker go, every time when they opened the door. And again, funny 
for a couple times and they just kept showing it and showing it. I distinctly remember they went kind of far with the pranks in these. There was one, I'm not kidding, and I, I, I'm wondering if we could like find these online anywhere, but there was one where they had like, a, it was like at a public, again, I think it was at a public pool because they had showers, right? And they had people showering after they, or maybe it was at a beach or something, I don't know. It was a public shower. And they rigged one of the shower heads to put out red water. So that it looked like blood. And that horrified some people. <laughs> and I distinctly remember this, this bit in it. They, there was one guy who fainted. That's how bad that was. That was that's when you, the joke goes too far. But uh, yeah. Um, 33 of the most hysterical gags. Practical jokes ever caught on camera. 35 more. Oh my god. So many of these. Well, where are these from? Uh, it's from 1992 to 1995, Key News Television Multimedia Group of, of Canada. Oh, maybe this is from Canada. Um, oh, okay, well, there you go. That's the prank show. Not much else to say about that. Uh, let's, uh, let's get these out first. Um, Three Stooges. I have a lot of Three Stooges tapes. There's this one, there's uh, this one right here. I don't know like what the overlap is on these. Uh, okay, sorry for the sudden cutaway. Uh, my lights just flickered for some reason. So anyway, uh, Three Stooges tapes. Um, so I got into Three Stooges pretty, in like the early 90s, I think. I got into it because my dad was a big fan of these. He's, you know, this is like the stuff he grew up on. He watched, like, The Three Stooges, Laurel and Hardy, The Little Rascals, you know, all those old, funny, black-and-white movie, uh, movies, TV shows, and uh, I guess little short comedy things they would show at, like, you know, on, like, you know, the, the, you know when they had the theaters, like, the old-school theaters where they have, like, a movie, and then they'd show stuff in between, and then they have another movie, you know, matinees and stuff like that. But he, he grew up on this stuff. So how I found out about The Three Stooges was... Uh, when my dad would hang out with his friends, uh, like they would come to our house or we would go to their house or something, they would always go into the TV room and I would hear them laughing their heads off, like, like cackling like hyenas. It was loud and it was kind of obnoxious to be honest. But one day I went over to see what they were watching, what the heck they were screaming about and they were watching Three Stooges and I watched it and I was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> Because I love Looney Tunes and stuff, and that's basically, you know, what they were. They were the living cartoon characters, and they would, you know, be hitting each other and smacking each other and stuff. You, you know the Three Stooges. Uh, ever since then, I've been a big fan. Um, I have lots of VHS tapes of them. Some of them are... This one's sealed. That's surprising. These are sealed, too, actually, inside this, uh, inside this cardboard case. Uh, the other box is full of more tapes, so we'll get to those. I'll probably go through them briefly, but yeah, Three Stooges, I have a lot of them. A lot of Three Stooges. Um, let's let's do this by stack here. Mighty Ducks, D2. I actually don't remember a whole lot about the Mighty Ducks sequel. I remember the first one, but um, I know there was, like, there was like three of them, and I think there was some kind of revival recently, and then there was the animated show, which had nothing to do <laughs> with the movies. Um... But yeah, uh, hockey movie. 90s uh, sports movies were a dime a dozen, and a lot of them were very much the same. So they had a formula, and they stuck with it, and it worked. So I guess that's something. So yeah, Mighty Ducks 2. Um, I'm sure it's fine. I know a lot of people love Mighty Ducks. I'm, I'm okay with it. Now, here, now this right here, The Sandlot. This movie right here is one of the best. My One of my favorite. The VHS bubble is, like, really messed up. Look at that. I don't know if you can see... It's like all bubbly. Is it upside down? Is that why it's doing that? Oh, man. I guess these these um, clamshells don't last very well because they're starting to yellow. Wow. Um, I have this on Blu-ray, I think, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, Sandlot, one of the one of the best kids' movies. Talking about uh, sports movies. This one was different, though. It wasn't about, like, Oh, the underdog team that has to beat the 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 good players, and then they they learn a lesson in the end. No, they were already good. <laughs> in fact, there was a scene in the movie where they they fought a bunch of punks and they completely devastated them. <laughs> but yeah, 
The Sandlot, great movie, very quotable, very memorable. Uh, I lo love it. One of my favorites as a kid. Goosebumps, the uh, movie that started the an the, not the an I got animation on my mind. The movie that started the series. Um, this is the Haunted Mask. I remember really liking this one. It's kind of creepy too. Is about this girl who uh, found a, a monster mask, and then she like couldn't get it off of her head, and it started to like merge with her body. It was weird. It was very weird for a kids movie. Um, but yeah, this kind of kicked off the series, which uh, the series for me is kind of hit or miss. Like it was on on the level of like, are you afraid of the dark? You know, stuff like that. Kids horror. Some of it. Sometimes it was good. Sometimes it was bad. I did read the Goosebumps books when I was younger. And I do know that a lot of the shows, the, a lot of the episodes of the show were different from the book. So that's something, you know, adaptations have to kind of do that. But uh, I do uh, I do remember really liking this one. Um, I like the cover. Very, uh, very, very Halloween-like. Good colors. Um, but yeah. Uh, shy, shy, quiet Carly Beth is an easy target for everyone's teasing and practical jokes. But this Halloween, she's found a wonderfully spooky man. And then she gets revenge. And then there's comeuppance, I think. Um, yeah, Goosebumps. Really cool. Let's get that out of the way. And then we have Jim Carrey's The Grinch in the green, <laughs> in the green thing. Um, I like when they would color coat the, uh, the thing to match something like this one. Like the Goosebumps one was black. This one's green. Uh, you don't really see that a lot with DVDs. Sometimes you do. Usually they just stick to the black thing well now blu-rays are they're all blue but uh except a couple i remember like occasionally they'd show like uh they'd have like something that is a different color from the blue or the whatever plastic they're using just to match up with what the the movie is but yeah how, jim carrey's how the grinch stole christmas let's get this out of the way immediately the original one the chuck jones one absolute classic best cannot be topped this one I think is pretty good though, because it's Jim Carrey, and he basically, in my opinion, Jim Carrey saved this movie because he's Jim Carrey and he's amazing. Um, the costume work is really good, like that that makeup and the effects in this, fantastic. I I I, I do enjoy this one. the The Illumination one that came out uh, not too long ago was okay, but I don't know. It's something about it just didn't really seem like it. Um, it captured the same spirit as well. Well, it, it kind of did, but it, there was just, I don't know. There was a lot about it that didn't really work for me. Um, I, I will always go back to the, the first animated version of the Grinch, but if this is on, I will watch it. So there's that. And we have Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory in a nice, very, very pale white, uh, be wow! Something uh, makes it look like a, a a movie older than it actually is. This movie was like what nineteen sixty nine. Um, mostly still holds up. Some of the like visuals and effects don't work. Like even back then, the 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 river of chocolate was like yeah, it's just that's just brown water. Um, but still a classic movie. Very holds up very well though. Um, the Tim Burton one does not. <laughs> Uh, there's parts of the Tim Burton one that I do like, but not uh, this one again, just like with the Grinch, the original's best. Don't mess with perfection. That's what I like to say. Um, a lot of people have over the years though, have like reanalyzed this movie and like, there's been a lot of talk about it that I never really thought about. Like there was, um, like a lot of people pointed out how grandpa Joe was kind of a jerk and kind of selfish and uh, i'm like yeah that's yeah they have a point there he's kind of a he's kind of a dick but um abs i don't really think there's anything to, to say about this movie it's it's absolutely wonderful and uh it's the prequel to snowpiercer yeah look it up i don't know exactly how true that is or not but uh anyway free willy oh free willy 2 actually <laughs> I thought it was the first one. Apparently, I have the sequel, which I forgot there was a sequel. Um, I don't think I have actually watched this. I'm probably not missing anything. Uh, but yeah, there was a. I think there was like three Free Willy movies, weren't there? 
And there was an animated series that nobody talks about. And I was thinking of reviewing it on Cartoon Clip Show on the main channel for a long time. I don't know how much of it has, like, survived, though. I have to check YouTube and see if there maybe there's, like, a tape or something of it. But it's weird because it was, like, an evil mad scientist who was, like, a cyborg. And I, that's about as much as I remember. But, um, yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't really remember. I, I I don't think I've even seen this. Smarter and more endearing than the original, the ideal family movie. I sincere severely doubt that. Uh, Free Willy too. If you've seen it, let me know if it's uh, smarter and endearing, more endearing than the original. Leave a comment. So there you go. Uh, we have two more on this stack here. We have Richie Rich's Christmas Wish. I don't think I've seen this either. <laughs> I remember the first Richie Rich movie with Macaulay Culkin. Kind of liked it. Um, I, I have to admit, though, like, I don't know. The I, I remember watching the Richie Rich cartoon, the one by, I think it was Ruby Spears or Hanna-Barbera. It's hard to tell the difference sometimes. I'm pretty sure it was Ruby Spears. Um, the only thing, like, like, he had a robot maid who was awesome, and they, they left her out of the movies, which sucks. But, um... I don't know. Again, if you've seen this, leave a comment and let me know if it's any good because apparently I've not seen it. And, oh, wow, look at this. 102 Dalmatians. Still sealed. Wow. 1429 from wherever the hell we bought this from. Jeez. I don't think I've seen this either. <laughs> I do remember, like, the commercials with Glenn Close. Uh, she was a good... Uh, version of Cruella DeVille just from like the little bit I have seen of this um like she was a great choice for this like I remember her really hamming it up you know that's what you want from a villain especially in a Disney movie um me too unlikely heroes with a bone to bone wait I just noticed there's a parrot on the <laughs> I don't remember wait was it was there there was a 101 Dalmatians movie wasn't there I don't, re I don't remember. Am I getting confused? There Listen, there's a lot of media in the world, and there's only so much I can retain, but um, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, interesting that this is still sealed, though. Uh, apparently, I just wasn't interested in this. Uh, when did this come out? Um, is there a date on here? I don't see a date on here. Wow. All right, well, there it is. 102 Dalmatians. Uh, the Secret Garden from Warner Brothers. Uh, I remember like the commercials for this. I don't know anything about this. I know I know it's like a it's big, oh, oh no. What happened here? Oh no. The value. Uh, I don't remember watching this either. I think a lot of times like my parents or my grandparents would buy movies for like when the kids would come over and you know think hey, they they'll throw something on and uh, a lot of these just went unwatched, I guess. So, yeah. Um, I know this is based off of a book. I remember commercials for it. I think there was like a Broadway show or something. Cause I, I, I distinctly remember... I don't know anything about this. That's the, the point of this. Uh, leave a comment and let me know if this was any good also. I'll probably just do that for everything I either don't remember or don't know anything about i do know a lot about this the little rascals speaking of which uh my dad watched the originals um i remember really liking this movie i i was also kind of introduced to the little rascals through my dad uh we didn't, we didn't watch it as much as like the three stooges and laurel and hardy though but uh i do remember really liking this movie it was very cute it was a, a very funny i think um i remember seeing a thing a while ago where like the actors who were in this movie, like got back together and recreated this photo, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I remember this movie being pretty funny. Uh, the, the kids were kind of adorable and, you know, it had a lot of charm to it. I like the dog with the little ring around his no his eyes. Um, I remember there was, um, a scene where like they went to see some of their parents, like they went to, they, they went to his house and like his dad also had the, the, the hair point, <laughs> <laughs> which which was uh, kind of funny and i think w they went to one of their other houses and their their parents like looked like the, the the parents like looked like the kids basically which was kind of 
cute. But uh, yeah, Little Rascals, love it. I do. I do remember quite a bit about that one. This one is ah, there it is, original Free Willy. Um, I don't actually remember a whole lot about this movie. I remember Michael Jackson did the soundtrack, and I remember this scene distinctly. And uh, some about the kid, like he has like a new dad, which was like you know a common trope for a lot of family movies. Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember liking it. I remember it being fun and enjoying it, but, uh, pure magic, you will cheer. Well, apparently someone thought that the sequel is better. So I don't know about that. Now, what's interesting about this, and I do remember that I had this is because it came with this, <laughs> this little like whale pendant that you could wear around your neck which is kind of neat looking. It's very, um, there you go. And the, the, the string I think has, um, worn out over the years. But, uh, I remember this, uh, you know, sometimes they would include like a little gift with the, the VHS tapes. Uh, I do ha have another one that I think we're going to be coming up on soon that we'll talk about also. But, um, yeah, that was kind of a neat little thing. I think I wore this to school once and got made fun for, made fun of for it, but Anyway, that was Free Willy. Uh, let me let me take this one out because it's 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 standing there mocking me. So this is not from uh, like the original collection. I found this at a thrift store. Uh, I want to say like maybe ten years ago. This is the Never Ending Story from the TV show. A lot of people don't know the Never Ending Story had a TV series. I found this out when years and years ago. I did a review of the animated series, which I'm sure also people didn't know anything about. Uh, there was a never ending story animated series. I did a review of it on cartoon clip show many years ago. Go to the main channel, check it out. It's an old video. Go easy on it. But uh, I also found out that there was a TV show. I don't know anything about this. <laughs> I've never watched it. I don't know how good it is. It certainly looks brooding based on the uh, the cover art there. Um, I assume that's Bastion, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how many... Oh, this is Volume 2, apparently, so I, I got Volume 2. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to point this out because it was sitting there, and I was like, mm, no. So, there's that. Um, here's another one that I do know. Casper. This movie was surprisingly good for what it was. Uh, it was a live-action Casper the Friendly Ghost movie with his... What were they? His uncles or something? The three other ghosts? Um, I, I actually remember really liking this one, too. I don't know how well it holds up today, like, with the effects and not, and whatnot. I don't know. Like, the, I think the effects are, like, vague enough that maybe they can still get away with it these days. And uh, what I do remember about this, they gave Casper, like, a tragic backstory. Like, he died like frozen to death in the snow or something and it was weird and there was like a machine that could bring ghosts back to life and there was there was a lot of a lot of strange things in this but i guess when you have something like casper the friendly ghost uh you know there's a lot of a lot of wiggle room for you know doing new stuff with the ip so i guess they uh they went a little nuts with it. Um, I think it turned out pretty well, though. I know a lot of people still like this movie. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's still pretty good. Again, I don't know how well it holds up, but I'm sure it holds up fine. Oh, God, this this one next. Uh, Baby's Day Out. <laughs> Written by John Hughes, who wrote The Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink. 13 Candles and other movies and Kevin Bacon. Um, look up the Red Letter Media review of this movie. It's hilarious. Uh, I'm not going to lie. A lot of this movie did make me laugh. <laughs> I think a lot of it still would make me laugh because there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of slapstick humor in it, especially with these guys. Um, there's a scene where... Uh, there's a very dragged out scene in this movie where like they found the baby and then like they were trying to hide it from the cops. So they like were in a park just sitting, sitting on a bench and like they were hiding him like under a coat 
and the baby took out a lighter and started lighting Joe Montagna's crotch. <laughs> and his crotch was on fire because funny. <laughs> I th- it was very dragged out. Like, I think the, the part that kills me about that is that it was so, it was so dragged out that it was, it, it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, it's basically on one of the, based on like one of those old like cartoon gags where like, uh, they got to watch the baby. Oh no, the baby got out. He's wandering through a construction site and they turn that live action. Um, man, I'm just now noticing a lot of these tapes are dirty. I'm gonna have to clean these. Uh, this, this clamshell is not held up very well either. Uh, probably watched it a lot. So it's got a lot of mileage under it. Uh, yeah, baby stay out. Um, I might want to watch this again just to see if it's still funny. We'll see. Oh boy, this one this is one I've been waiting for. Oh, look at this. What kind of cover is that? Do you guys know what movie this is? The Indian in the Cupboard. Yes. I remember this being advertised as you get a free gift with this one, just like with Free Willy. Um, it's, they said, you get your own cupboard, and then it turned out that the cupboard was just the uh, VHS thing. Let's see if I can do this without damaging it. It's oh no, it has not held up well. Um, it's it's actually fused to the <laughs> fused to the clamshell. Oh no. Um, basically, you you do a, you reverse the um, the the paper inside the clamshell, and it looks like this. Yeah, but uh, on the plus side. Here's what you get with this tape, if I can grab it. You got a little figure, and you got the key to the cupboard. Um, the premise of the movie was the kid found like a cupboard, like a little, you know, a little wooden cupboard, and he had a key for it, and he put his action figures inside of it, and he locked it, and then he opened it, and the action figure would come to life. How exciting is that? I ate that up as a kid. Gee, I wonder why. But, um, yeah. Let me uh, open it up. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Get in there. Put the key. Uh, I, again, I do like that they, they molded the, uh, the tape, the, the clamshell to look like this. But you put the key in, and it opened up, and now he's alive, right? Damn, didn't work. Okay. Um, question, though. Is, is this okay? It's called the Indian in the cupboard. Is this okay nowadays? Can we leave this one alone, guys? This is a very charming kids movie. Can we just can we just look, look the other way on this one? I don't want this one getting banned. There's nothing inherently offensive about the movie itself. There's literally a scene where he puts like Darth Vader and and RoboCop in the cupboard, and they all come to life. And there's like a T Rex, probably reference to to Jurassic Park, but. Can we just leave this one alone, please? We don't need the we don't need to go after this one, please. Anyway, uh, we have Babe, the pig. Uh, I don't remember anything about this movie. I know there was like there was like two pig movies. There was like Babe, and then there was what was the other one? Gordy, I think it was called. Um, yeah, Babe, and I think there was Charlotte's Web too. A lot of pig movies weird anyway i don't remember anything about that one i remember this one though dennis the menace <laughs> live action with walter Matthau, who was great in this movie by the way and uh christopher lloyd was in this too he's not he's not on the cover but uh christopher lloyd played like a like a criminal he was like a drifter robbing the houses which was and he was really he was really creepy in this movie like he was dirty and he lived under a bridge, and he had a knife, and I'm like, oh god! But uh, he was no match for Dennis, from what I remember. Dennis almost killed him in a few scenes. <laughs> um, I did enjoy. I, I enjoyed this one on the same level as like Little Rascals because it was about a kid getting in trouble, and yeah, it, it was good. Is this painted? I thought this was a photograph for a second. This, I think that's an illustration. Well, is that, is that um, Drew Susan, Su- Suzanne or whatever his name is? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, wow. Um, Dennis the Menace. Really, really cool. Very funny when I saw it. Uh, Angels in the Outfield. This was uh, oh, Christopher Lloyd again. Look at that. Um, this one, uh, 
again, another 90s sports movie. Um, they were all kind of the same. Uh, this one, I think, was a little bit different because it was like... It, it, he wanted the Angels to win so because like his dad said, like, well, my, your mom will, your and my mom will get back together when the Angels win the pennant. And um, then he was like, he prayed to God and then Christopher Lloyd Angel came down and they helped rig the game so that the Angels would win. <laughs> Yeah, uh, flat out wonderful movie. You got uh, Danny Glover, Tony Danza, and Christopher Lloyd. Very nice. I I kind of I would get this movie confused sometimes with um. What was that other movie with the with the baseball? Rookie of the year, where it was like he he broke his arm and then it healed in a way where he was like he, he like made him the world's greatest pitcher and then he joined the he joined whatever the baseball team was and. Yeah, the, again, a lot of these movies drew from the same well. There's a lot of similarities, and yeah, they're a lot of the same. Um, I think I remember kind of liking this one. Um, I find it funny that God would go out of his way to rig a baseball game, but, you know, kids movie, so whatever. Uh, that's Angels in the Outfield. Um, got a couple more in here. Got uh, Casper meets Wendy, Wendy the Witch, who's like, Casper's um, little friend from the old cartoons. I don't think I've seen this one. <laughs> Again, this is another one that my my parents or my grandmother probably got because of uh, you know buy the movies so the kids can watch it. Looking at the um, looking at the the stills there, the effects don't look as good as the original, the first Casper movie. So I guess now who's in this? George Hamilton. Hilary Duff, Shelley Duvall, whoa, and they have like bootleg, uh, <laughs> bootleg, uh, Hocus Pocus, which is in this movie too. Wow. Uh, I have not seen this movie. If you have seen this movie, leave a comment and let me know if it was good. Now we're getting into the real classics. Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins, y'all. Um, I, I really remember, uh, liking this movie because uh D you know dick van dyke was in it he's great uh absolute classic I, I really don't know if there's much else to be said about this movie um but it's mary it's mary poppins y'all she's cool uh this movie however i think gets overlooked because of mary poppins bed knobs and broomsticks this was like she was learning to be a witch from him who thought he was selling a scam but all of his scams worked and they made like a magic bed and they traveled around to like different worlds. And they were, they were in like a cartoon fish world and then like a cartoon animal world. And, uh, then they fought Nazis at the end and beat the hell out of them. So there you go. Mary Poppins didn't do that. Dunstan checks in. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've seen this one either. I, I know about it, but I've never watched it. It's like, the, he lives in a hotel and he has a monkey and the monkey causes trouble in the hotel and the blah blah blah. Who's in this? Um, uh, it says uh, uh, Jason Alexander, Faye Dunaway, Eric Lloyd. Uh, yeah, there's a monkey movie. How could you go wrong? And uh, speaking of monkeys, Jumanji with Robin Williams, who is an absolute treasure to our world. Uh, Jumanji, Jumanji, like to me was kind of a weird movie because it was the first time I really started to notice CGI in a movie because the, the, the CGI in this, even for the time was not that great. And all I can think about is because, you know, obviously at the time I didn't know about how movies were, worked or at least then not fully, but, uh, all I can think of is that why didn't they use a real elephant? <laughs> because the elephant did this that's why they didn't use a real elephant dumbass however old i was rob but um yeah jumanji it was like they have the the magic board game and they play the board game and they can't stop playing the board game until someone wins and then everything in the board game comes to life so you got like rhinoceroses rampaging um you got like birds and elephants and tigers and there was a guy, they summoned like a hunter guy who was like trying to kill Robin Williams, which is kind of messed up now that I'm really thinking about it. Uh, the guy playing the hunter was kind of good though, but um, I don't remember who that was. Uh, 
Zay Robin Williams, Bonnie Hunt, Kristen Dunst, really? That was Kristen Dunst? Where is she? Huh. I didn't realize that. Uh, Bradley Pierce. They don't say who the hunter. They don't even have the hunter guy on here. Uh, there we go. Jumanji. Uh, I heard the one with the rock was not bad, but I didn't really... I wasn't really interested in seeing that. There was another movie, though, that came out. Oh, I hit the camera. There was another movie that came out, though, that was like... I think it was supposed to be like a... I think they wanted to make like an anthology movie series based on like board games. What the heck was it? It was like a space movie? Z Zathura or something like that? It began with a Z? It was basically the same premise, except it was in space. And there was like aliens and robots and stuff. Um... I don't remember if that one was any good. I just remember it existing. I do I do remember really liking this, though. So, there we go. Uh, Tom and Huck with Jonathan Taylor Thomas, who was, like, huge in the 90s. I wonder what he's done since. Um, it's uh, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. There they are, covered in mud, I hope. Uh, I don't think I've actually seen this one either. <laughs> Leave a comment and let me know if this one was any good. Speaking of Robin Williams, Flubber, based on the absent-minded professor. I keep getting the absent-minded professor and the nutty professor mixed up. So, uh, but yeah, this was Flubber. This was when he makes the, the goop that bounces. And uh, they made it come to life and dance because uh, the 90s, you know? You can't just have a guy bouncing around, I guess. Um, I remember really liking this one too. Uh, I remember there was like a weird, he had like this little robot friend that was following him around that apparently like fell in love with him. That was kind of weird. Uh, fun fact. I think this prop of the, the little robot, I think it's on display at Epcot center. I remember seeing it, I think, or maybe I was something else. I don't know. I don't know if it's, if it was, I don't know if it's still there or not, but, uh, I remember this one being pretty funny. Um, but again, it's Robin Williams. You, you can't go wrong with Robin Williams. So there's that. Uh, oh, sealed miracle on 34th street. The, uh, the nineties remake with, um, what's, what was her name? Uh, Mara Wilson. Yeah. Uh, I, apparently I didn't watch it. <laughs> uh, five, oh, there's a $5 mail in rebate though. Oh man. With additional purchase of one of these, surely, uh, one of these Shirley temple titles really was Shirley temple. Wow. Uh, purchase required. I hope I'm sure that's still good. Um, I, I actually have not seen this. I have not seen a miracle on 34th street. I know, I know about it. I know what it's about, but it's like one of the few like staples, uh, staples of Christmas that I've not, not seen, huh? But, uh, two thumbs up from, from Siskel and Ebert. So, you know, it's gotta be good. Uh, Thomas and the magic railroad. Uh, so Thomas, the tank engine, I don't think it was ever as popular in the U.S. as he was in, like, other countries. But they, they certainly tried with him. I remember the, they had the show on TV with George Carlin as Mr. Conductor, which was weird. <laughs> but it was George Carlin, so we'll allow it. Um, this one was, like, the movie that they tried to... They tried to make, and it was, like... It was, like, what uh, what's his name was trying to, like, make a new... Peter Fonda was trying to make a new, um, a new train and he was sad. And then like Alec Baldwin was there and he was doing weird stuff. And, uh, yeah. Oh, Mara Wilson was also in this, huh? How about that? It was basically in the nineties. It was basically Jonathan Taylor, Thomas and Mara Wilson. Were they in anything together ever? That would have been like the ultimate family nineties movie. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't remember much else about it. It was kind of silly, but uh, I know people like Thomas, so I'm sure it's fine. Uh, okay, apparently there was an animated movie in here, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the original. Um, uh, it's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I might already have this VHS because I have a, a box of uh, Disney clamshell animated stuff that I've been trying to collect and complete the collection of. And we have Pete's Dragon. This movie is stupid. <laughs> I I remember watching this. 
it's a it's like a musical and he's he's got like a friend dragon who's a cartoon it's very corny and, and it doesn't hold up very well i'm sorry but you know there's other movies that hold up very well from this era but not this isn't one of them uh yeah uh, <laughs> if you don't believe me rewatch it just just trust me there's a lot about this that doesn't work um they remade it uh live action a while back and i heard that one is a lot better so i'm sure that uh, that'll be cool so yeah peach dragon not not that good and finally the last one in this first box of vhs tapes spy kids the first one uh black vhs clam cool um I actually don't remember a lot about this movie. I remember, I think I've seen it. I remember seeing the second one where they were in the computer in the, in the, in the video game and they like Antonio Banderas was their uncle or something. And, uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't rem I remember liking it, but I don't remember much about it. So it's not, it has not retained. So what, what year was spy kids? What's the deal with not putting dates on, on VHS clamps? Maybe it says it on here. Uh, 88 minute. Nope, doesn't say. Hmm. It's old enough to have a VHS tape. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Spy Kids. All right, well, that was box one of the VHS hoard that I have now in my house. Um, I'm going to cut away. I'll be right back and we're going to look at box number two. So stick around. Even though you technically don't got to go anywhere, it's going to happen instantaneously. And we're back with box number two. And man, there's way more in here than there was in the other box. Because this is the actual tapes, not any of the clamshell stuff. The clamshells take up a lot of extra space. Uh, so I know there's a lot of stuff in here. We're probably going to go through really quick because they're not that interesting to look at. So uh, let's get started. Open the Ark of the Covenant sequel, part two. Maybe I have a tape of that. So, um, boy, there's already more Three Stooges tapes in here. Um, let's start with these. We have Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Only one of these movies is decent. The other one is comically bad. Um, I still really like the first Mortal Kombat movie. I think it holds up very well. Again, then not maybe not so much in terms of effects or accuracy towards the game, but you know it's it's a very watchable, good movie. Annihilation is stupid, <laughs> as a lot of these cash in sequels were because they tried so hard to when they when they get one success they tried real hard to get that second success and it didn't really work uh, i think most people know about mortal kombat the films by now mario brothers the movie this movie's bad but i love it <laughs> it's okay to like bad movies as long as you admit that they're bad it's a blast luigi the scapelli brothers are pouring in on our business and King Koopa is trying to get out and turn people into monkeys or whatever the plot of this movie was. Um, I know there's, there's a lot of stories behind this movie about how Bob Hoskins and uh, John Leguizamo were like, they, they hated making this movie so much that they were drunk on set all the time. But you know what? They were great in this. And I feel like this works as a comedy. Like if this, like, Bob Hoskins in particular was such a good actor and like really funny too like he he knew like all the comic like uh, all like the, the the comic timings and everything and i i think that's what helps make people enjoy this movie that and uh, dennis hopper as king koopa is hilarious <laughs> also the goombas which look like this in the movie <laughs> little headed dinosaur people man they, they got so much wrong in this movie but it's still so much fun to watch, but there you go, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, okay, so we have uh, wrestling tapes here. Let's just look at these real quick. Um, we've got WrestleMania 1 through 15, best of. That feels like a lot to put on one VHS tape, but there you go. There's all the WrestleManias. Um, we have 
Best of Survivor Series, 1987 to 1997. Again, it feels like a lot to put on one VHS tape. We've got Brett the Hitman Hart. We've got one of my favorites, Mick Foley, the faces of Foley, the three faces of Foley. Uh, another one of my favorites, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Really cool. This one's like really old too. Uh, where year did this come out? MCMLXXXIX. So that's... Trying to remember my Roman numerals. Uh, 19... 1999? 1999? No. What, really? No, that's, that's not wrong. Uh, someone will probably correct me. Uh, Love Hacksaw is one of my favorites. Uh, come get some. The women of the WWF. That's how old this is. So we have uh, Deborah, China, and Tori. Not to be confused with Tori. And then we got Jackie, Terry, and Ivory. Before they were the divas. They were the women of wrestling. And then they became the women of wrestling again. Or just, just the lady wrestlers. And they became really good. And treated uh, with more respect. Uh, and then there's this one where... ACW's wrestling wrestling's wildest matches: fire, barbed wire, light bulbs, rattlesnakes, and Terry Funk, the most most dangerous thing on this whole list. <laughs> yeah, I know th there was like a lot of underground wrestling things that would do wacky stuff, like like fire. I remember there was a there was some wrestling thing I watched where they put like the title belt inside of a cage, uh, like a little box with a like a rattlesnake in it, and they had to. Not only wrestle the other guy, but they got to get the belt out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I know Japanese wrestling goes crazy with stuff like this. Um, I might want to like rewatch this just to see what the heck is on here. See hardcore icon Terry Funk and the guttiest wrestlers in the ACW as they step into the ring with live rattlesnakes, barbed wire, exploding tables, electrified fences, and the Japanese suicide match. Oh my god. It's fire and lava and acid and guns, and explosions, and bears, and sharks. They're going to get you. That's wrestling. Okay, so we have more um, more Three, Three Stooges tapes. This was um, when I started really getting into the Three Stooges. They started releasing these from uh, Columbia, and uh, they, had like, they had like three shorts on them. Um, this one's actually not even open. Um, so we're not going to look at these too uh for too long ah the woman haters <laughs> that's can't do that anymore I, I think this was actually their their very first um their very first uh comedy short 1934 wow yeah and it was a musical too it was like the only one they did that was like a musical um there's another one there's one where they made fun of the nazis which is always good uh, and three little pirates is a honeymooners. These might have been my dad's at some point. Oh, uh, Laurel and Hardy. I think I think these might have been my dad's. I don't know. Uh, oh, that's interesting. This one is just like that's weird. Just a, a sleeve without uh, another Three Stooges. More Three Stooges with W. C. Fields. All the classic comedies. Uh, Three Stooges, Plumbing We Will Go, Three Stooges. This one is, um, this one's interesting. This was, like, Curly Joe, who was, like, the last Stooge after the, uh, all the others got replaced. And they started making movies after a while. What year did this one come out? Um, I don't know. The tape came out in 95. I don't know, remember what year this movie came out. And they weren't very good. And it's a shame, because after, um... After Curly left, they got Shemp. Right? I'm pretty sure I have some Shemp ones here somewhere. Shemp was good. Oh, there. Well, there. Here's Shemp right there. Um, Shemp was good. He was. He did his own thing, and um, you know he, he was fine. And then after that, it just went downhill. There's a whole history of the Three Stooges. I think they made a movie about it not too long ago. Just the the history of like like the behind the scenes stuff. Not not the movie where the Three guys played the Three Stooges, but um, just like like about the the you know their behind the scenes stuff. I don't I don't remember what it was. I remember watching it. No, remember what it was called. Um, this one's interesting because 
this was like a TV show they had back in like the black and white era of, you know, television. And it was live too, because back then TV was live. So uh, I, I don't know if this is like rare or anything, but I, ha I have it. Let me move all these Three Stooges tapes out of the way and we'll get to some of the good stuff here. Okay. Oh, there you go. Don't fall over. Don't fall over. Okay. Um, oh, here's a Sesame Street tape that apparently I had. This is interesting because unlike that other tape we just looked at, this one's like completely encased. That's interesting. I don't think I ever see that with a tape. That's weird. Um, what are these? Christmas, the Christmas visit... Jingle Bells Sing Along for $2.99. Uh, three fully animated cartoons. Through. Oh, the, I guess these are animated. Huh. Christmas Visit, The Candle Maker, and Jingle Bells. And this one is Jingle Bells, Christmas Toy Shop, Black and White, Jack Frost, and Snow. I guess the, these are just like public domain cartoons that probably... I got at some point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those over there. Those are gonna go with the other animated tapes. Okay. Does anybody remember this show? <laughs> WMAC Masters. This was um, okay. It was like one part pro wrestling, one part Power Rangers, one part uh, like faux sport, and. Um, more and one part Mortal Kombat, but for kids. So it was like this faux thing that it was like a competition with like martial artists, and they all had like they all look like fighting game characters. In fact, um, this guy right here, uh, what, what was his name? Ho Sung Pak, I think he was the digital artist. He was the the digital model for Liu Kang in the original Mortal Kombat games, and uh, I believe there's a guy in here. This this guy right here. Uh, Red Dragon. He was the actor who played Scorpion in the Mortal Kombat movie. So that was kind of interesting. They were like stuntmen, I think. And um, it, it was like a faux sport. They would like fight each other. And then they would get their key symbol, which had the, their logo on it. And they put it on their belt as a sign that they'd beaten each other. And then someone had to go like fight the, like, the, the, the champion who had the Dragon Star, which was like this gold star that was like you 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 you're the greatest martial artist in the world i actually really really like this until season two when they ruined it and they tried to put a storyline to it and that sucked it worked better as like a a pro a faux sport not not you know something with a serious a storyline we're supposed to take serious um okay we have the, there he is the absent-minded professor we were just looking at um flubber a little while ago he had the flying car, and there's the basketball team bouncing around with his uh, his invention. So, yeah, that's the original from uh, Walt Disney Studio Film Collection. I do love the old Disney films, like from this era, like Absent Mind Professor, The Nutty Professor. Uh, what, what Was The Nutty Professor Disney? I don't remember. It, it may not have. I don't remember. Um, but, like, they had, like, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Davy Crockett and all those old films. I'm pretty sure they're all up on Disney Plus right now, so you can check those out. Um, but yeah, that's a, a classic right there. Uh, the Bridge Over the River Kwai, still sealed. This also might have been one of my dad's that I took by accident. But um, yeah, uh, classic film, World War... World Was this World War II? I don't, actually don't know a whole lot about this movie. I know it's a, it's a classic, so there there you go. Uh, all right. Oh, boy. So many to look at. Uh, let's start big here. If we can get these out. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Ninja Turtles. First one, second one, and also this one. <laughs> um, the Ninja Turtles movies were great. Um, the first one, I think, still holds up pretty well. Second one, they got a little goofy with it, but it was also, it was, it was still pretty good. Third one, they got too goofy with it, and it was terrible. Um, but yeah, I have all three. So I can watch uh, two of these and leave the other one on the shelf, as we should have. Kevin Costner in Robin Hood. This is arguably 
the best Robin Hood movie that has ever been made. And there have been some good ones. There's like the Errol Flynn Robin Hood, for like the, you know, the early one. Um, Disney's Robin Hood, which is more... I rewatched that not too long ago, and I'm like, all right, this is all right, but it's clearly meant for a kid. Uh, this, though, Kevin Costner, the Robin Hood one. This is good, because Kevin Costner in a role that's not terrible. Um, <laughs> also, you had, like, Morgan Freeman was in this. Uh, who else? Alan Rickman was the sheriff from Nottingham. This was a good one. Ab absolutely fantastic. I remember the action figures for this, too. That's how good it was. They were marketing the hell out of it. So there you go. Uh, Dumb and Dumber. Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. <laughs> um, this is one of those movies that feels like it shouldn't have like been as good as it was. It was very funny and it wasn't overly annoying. Like this, this had good, like good pacing and uh, it was kind of relatable too in some regards. Some regards, not all, but uh, yeah, absolutely great. And the two of them together just worked well, which is funny because Jeff Daniels uh, at the time was more. He was he was typically more of a serious actor. Like he was in Purple Rose of Cairo and. He was in Speed, and um, and then he did Dumb and Dumber, where he uh, had diarrhea on a toilet that didn't work. So there you go. They made they, there was a Saturday Night Live bit about that too. Where he, he kept trying to he was on a talk show and he kept trying to do like like, like talk about his serious work, and they kept showing that <laughs> that clip. <laughs> but uh, there you go, Dumb and Dumber, hilarious. Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams once again. This is one of those movies where I wonder if. Uh, you can make this nowadays, despite it being very good and has you know a lot of charm and heart to it. But um, we'll see. Dumb and uh, Dumb and Dumber, Mrs. Doubtfire. That's uh, Robin Williams uh, was divorced from his family and he wanted to see his kids again, so he disguised himself as a nanny who was awesome and fun. And uh, then they found out and they were like, "What?" <laughs> I'm summarizing, obviously. Men in Black. I love Men in Black. This is seriously up there with like Ghostbusters in terms of like sci-fi comedies. I mean, you had you had um, Tommy Lee Jones. You had Will Smith, who worked well together. Will Smith, you know, he brought a lot of charisma to the movie. Tommy Lee Jones was just great. Uh, uh, what I think a lot of people don't credit this movie enough for was uh, Vincent D'Onofrio as Edgar. He was great. Vincent D'Onofrio has a lot of great range in terms of acting because he was he was in um, recently. He's like the kingpin in the MCU, Marvel MCU, uh, the the Marvel MCU, yeah, the Marvel Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, he was uh, he was in Jurassic Worlds. He was good in that. He was uh, of course Private Pile in Full Metal Jacket and. He's a very underrated actor, I think, but he's so good. Oh, look how, look at the, look at that, the hologram, the holofoil. It's a rare holofoil VHS. I'm glad I kept it. Uh, Godzilla. <laughs> 1998 Godzilla. Uh, not a bad movie, in my opinion. It's got, it's got some stupid moments. It is not a Godzilla movie, though. Um... I don't know, and and the tape has texture too. You feel all the the reptile scales all over Godzilla. There he is, God, not Godzilla, renamed Zilla. Fun fact about this particular Godzilla: apparently, Toho, the company that owns actual Godzilla, bought the rights to this Godzilla. Then they put him in a real Godzilla movie where actual Godzilla destroyed him. You got to respect that commitment. But, but uh, there you go. Again, I don't think this is a terrible movie. Um, but it, uh, it has a cool VHS cover, though. I'll give it that. Size does matter. Ah, oh, Double entendre. From the creators of Independence Day. Try harder to sell your movie, guys. But uh, anyway, moving on. Yeah, oh, look. Look what fell out of... <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this fell out of the Godzilla tape. <laughs> Free Godzilla flashlight. And that's flashlight, despite how it looks. Um, yeah, oh, man. I wonder if you can get one of these nowadays. 
Mail in when you buy any three packages of Duracell batteries and the Godzilla video. Buy any three packages of Duracell batteries, DC, AA, AAA, 9 volt, D... Oh, oh, it's listing all the batteries. Holy shit. Um, rechargeable battery, Godzilla, plus, plus include 275 of postage. How much would that equate to? Three packages of Duracell batteries, plus the VHS tape, plus 279 shipping. 75 sh shipping, rather. Um... Let's see what when 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 was the expiration date on this? Request must be postmarked by four thirty ninety nine. Ah, oh, we're too late, guys. We can't get the Godzilla flashlight. Flashlight. Sorry, I did that on purpose. Anyway, let's put that with the tape. Let's move on to Liar Liar. Jim Carrey again. Um, I keep getting this movie confused with Yes Man, which basically has the same premise. And this movie. Um, he's trying to, you know, be good to his family, but he's always, uh, busy and he's always lying. So his son has a wish on his birthday that, so that his dad will never lie again. So he can't lie. And in Yes Man, it's kind of the same thing where he like says no to a lot of things. And he, uh, like, I forget exactly what happened in that movie. Somebody like did something to him and now he has to say yes to everything, which works out for the most part until it doesn't. But uh, yeah, Liar Liar with Jim Carrey. Uh, it's Jim Carrey. You're going to watch it. It has Jim Carrey in it. <laughs> He's always good. Uh, here we go. Yeah, baby, Austin Powers. That was a terrible impression. Uh, this is funny to me because recently I, um, I, I, I saw a video where somebody put Austin Powers in the game Mass Effect. And it was really funny. But, um, yeah, this, this movie was a smash hit to had two sequels, I think. And that's about it. I, I don't know. Was it, was there any more than that? I, I feel like there was a movie that came out that I like was so bad that everyone forgot about it. But, uh, I don't know. Austin Powers was good. It was so good. Everybody was talking like Austin Powers and Dr. Evil and it started getting really annoying. I know because people told me to stop anyway. Uh, oh boy. Yes. Power Rangers. I bought these at a, at a thrift store, unfortunately, I think. Uh, Planet Fun for a dollar. Each for a dollar. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the first volume. So if anybody has that and wants to send it to me, I will not object to that. This is the Green Ranger saga from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, where uh, they brought in Tommy, who was a bad guy originally, but then they made him good. And then his power started to suck because he kept getting drained or something. And then he had to stop being Green Ranger. And then he became the White Ranger, which is arguably a better Power Ranger. Uh, anyway, moving on. E.T., the extraterrestrial. This is another classic one. I, I mean, how could you not love... Oh. Uh-oh. Is this E.T.? I don't know. <laughs> Uh-oh. This might not actually be... I'm going to have to test this tape and find out for sure. But, uh, yeah, E.T. Maybe. Um, it's a, a fun... So I, I, saw, I recently saw a thing where, like... So, fun fact, uh, in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, there's a scene at the Senate where apparently there's, like, more of E.T.'s species, like, in one of the little pods. And there's a scene where, like, he goes to Earth in this movie and... Elliot is playing with his Star Wars figures, which is weird. And then he runs into a Yoda, uh, a person dressed as Yoda for like Halloween. And he thought that was kind of strange. And then people were saying like his powers are Jedi powers. Uh, and cause he can make things float and he could heal and you know, all the things Jedi's can do. Um, interesting theory. I don't know how well it holds up, which also is weird because then that means Star Wars as a movie exists in the Star Wars universe in a different galaxy from where Star Wars takes place. Well, ah, my brain. Um, let's move on to something else here. Uh, okay, this is interesting. I have two copies of Home Alone. <laughs> do I have Home Alone 2 in here? I do. Yes, let's let's bring that out. Uh, it's Home Alone, uh, two copies of Home Alone. One sealed. So I guess that has collector's value. Um, and Home Alone 2. Home Alone, classic Christmas movie. Home Alone 2 gets a bad rep, I think. Yes, it treads a lot of the same, you know, things that the first movie did, but 
I think it has a lot of merit to it too. I think it's a decent sequel. Also, uh, you know, I grew up in New York, so seeing New York in Christmas time is uh, very, very nice for me. But uh, there you go, three, three Home Alones. At least it's not Home Alone three. Now we're talking, baby. Batman '89 with Michael, uh, Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. Uh, this movie is absolutely great. I think this this holds up very well. A lot of people even still consider this one of, if not the best Batman movie, because it's so good. It's got Tim Burton in his like heyday when he was, you know, doing good stuff and didn't go all pretentious. Um, you know, great visuals, great characters. I mean, what else can you do? You you don't even have to put anything on the on the cover except the logo. There you go. That's all you need. Uh, and there's uh, there's Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Great, great version of the Joker. S played it so well. Because it's Jack Nicholson and he's nuts. Do I have the other? Oh, oh, yes I do. I have... There's Batman Returns. And here's Batman Forever. Do I have Batman and Robin? I don't. Oh no. Whatever shall we do. Um, Batman Returns kind of gets uh, another another movie that gets a bad rep. I think it's really good. I mean, Danny DeVito as the Penguin is so good. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman was awesome. You got Michael Keaton returning. Unfortunately, he didn't return for any of the other movies, which sucks. Um, Batman Forever with, the with, again, Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, I would argue that Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones saved this movie. This was um, this was the Val Kilmer Batman. This is the one time he uh, he played Batman. I think he was a decent Batman. He was good as Bruce Wayne. Sometimes when when you do you cast Batman, sometimes like the actor is good as Bruce Wayne but not as Batman. Sometimes good as Batman, not as Bruce Wayne. I think he was good as Bruce Wayne. Uh, Batman, he was okay. Uh, and then you had um, you had Chris Chris O'Donnell as Robin. Which was not a good version of Robin because he's he was always complaining and yelling. Uh, the best Batman yet? No, no. <laughs> I I do like this movie. I'll even I'll even say I like Batman and Robin on some level, but no. <laughs> the '89 is the best Batman movie in my opinion. Let's put the Batmans together there. And more Jim Carrey. We got Ace Ventura. When Nature Calls. Oh, this was the sequel. Not the, not the, oh, I do, I do have, I do have the original, yes. I might have to, like, dig through here and, uh, and, and, like, pull out movies in tandem with each other. Ace Ventura, when, Nat and Ace Ventura, when Nature Calls. This movie is interesting to me because it came out before I moved to Florida, and it takes place in Florida. The plot of this movie is that someone kidnapped Snowflake, the mascot of the Miami Dolphins, who is an actual dolphin. And there's a there's a tank by, uh, you know, in the in the uh, arena where you know they have the football games, and uh, he's their mascot. I didn't know for the longest time that that was bullshit. <laughs> I remember, I remember coming to Florida, and we actually went to a Dolphins game once, and I was like, "Where's the tank?" <laughs> oh. Kid Rob was stupid. Um, but yeah, uh, I, it, the more you think about it, though, the the less it makes sense. Because why would they have a, a small tank for a dolphin on the side of a football field? That that's that seems inhumane. I mean, that probably wouldn't stop certain people. But uh, yeah, um, apparently this covers damage. To, I cut that out at some point. I think I put that on a pog. <laughs> I cut out Jim Carrey, Ace Ventura's face and put it on a pog. It's one of the most 90s sentences you could possibly come up with. Uh, then Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, which is still very funny, but uh, I think the first one is better. So there you go. Uh, oh, well, we got some Back to the Future up in here. There's the first one. Here's the third one. Do I have the second one? I don't. Oh, no. We're missing Back to the Future 2. I'm going to have to keep an eye out when I go to thrift stores now. Uh, not much to say about Back to the Future. It's one of the best movie trilogies of all time. Even the, the third one, which a lot of people didn't like, I found out, because it was a you know it was more of a Western. But 
Eh, I, I think it fits in well with the movie. You know, it's just it's just another thing they tried. Maybe it dragged on a little too much, but um, I don't mind it at all. Two is my favorite, just because we get to see the future and what the future could have been if things didn't go south. Wayne's World! Wayne's World! Party time! Excellent! Extreme close-up! Woo! Uh, apparently I bought this at a thrift store, I think. It's $1.99. Um, I never had Wayne's World on VHS. I have it on DVD, I think. Came in a two-pack. Um, but yeah, Wayne's World. One of the few times when a Saturday Night Live bit goes to a movie and is actually good. I'm trying to think of all the other instances. Blues Brothers, uh, Coneheads, pro probably. Maybe. Kinda? I don't know. Uh, but they're all, Wayne's World is by far the best one. I mean, Blues Brothers, arguably, maybe. But uh, I also admittedly like Night at the Roxbury a little bit. I know, again, it's not a great one, but uh, some of it's kind of enjoyable. But uh, yeah, Wayne's World. That's uh, Mike Myers. And, um, oh shoot, I keep forgetting. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Brain. Dan Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey. I had to look at it. Wow. My brain is not working too good. Um, but yeah, they played these two guys doing a, a public access show in their basement. It was like the MTV generation got so popular. They actually were on MTV, I think. And, uh, they got two movies and the movies are great. So there you go. Uh, oh boy. Yes. One of the best Christmas movies of all time. Chevy Chase in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I love this movie. My family loves this movie. We used to watch this every year. <laughs> it's got, got Chevy Chase uh, Randy Quaid was in this too Randy Quaid was hilarious um, it's basically like he wants to have a, a Christmas party with all his family and everything's going wrong oh no Chevy Chase but uh, yeah it's, I'm surprised this is sealed actually it's uh, this is weird the, the, the seal is actually like opening up hmm. maybe I should take it out at some point but I won't now. X-Men. The first X-Men movie. Hard to believe that this is like on VHS. This feels like... when This movie came out when? 99? I want to say. Uh, 2000. Yeah. 2000. There were still VHS tapes back then. I don't think VHS went out of style until like... I want to say maybe 2005... So there was still a little bit of life in VHS, even though DVD was slowly creeping its way in. And then uh, that eventually got overthrown by Blu-ray. But yeah, the first X-Men movie, really good. Some parts don't hold up as well, but uh, the casting is pretty good. Um, you know, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine became legendary. Uh, in my opinion, I think X2 was better, but um, this was a good start. This was when the superhero movies were starting to really kick in like blade started it and then we had spider-man and then x-men and it was all it was all all downhill from uh, downhill's bad it was all it all started there there we go that's that's a better thing to call it um yeah x-men the series x-men the movie really good forrest gump tom hanks and forrest gump i have this movie and i like it um I found it weirdly relatable in certain parts, uh, particularly when he was like growing up and none of the kids wanted to sit on the bus next to him. And then the one girl said, okay. And then they kind of fell in love and then they just kind of lost track of each other after a while. It was getting a little too personal. All right. So Forrest Gump, really good. Uh, what is it? Oh no. Uh, <laughs> never ending story. The second one, not the first one. Uh, ooh, plus Bugs Bunny box office or box office, box office bunny. It's a Bugs Bunny cartoon. I remember that one. So the first never ending story, really good classic movie, very different from the book. In fact, I believe the author disowned that movie. He hated it because of how different it was. Very similar to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, Roald Dahl hated that movie, even though everyone loved it. Uh, first movie is absolutely fantastic. Second one, not as good, but still decent, I think, in my opinion. 
there's a lot about it that just doesn't really work out. But I think we can all agree it's better than the third movie. If you haven't seen the third movie, avoid it at all costs. But, uh, there you go, Never in the Story 2. Uh, Star Wars, The Making of Star Wars. Oh, wow. Um, this, I think, was part of a set that I might not have. I might have gotten this at a at a thrift store also, but I guess this is all like the behind the scenes, you know, stuff. I remember they showed stuff like that on TV. Well, they're like making the movie, but um, or making all the mo or all the movies, or is it just one of the movies? Go on location in Africa, which doubled as the planet of Tatooine. Um, fun fact: apparently, like a lot of the um, a lot of the sets of Star Wars were like left out in the desert. And I think people moved into them or something. I don't remember the... I don't know if that's entirely accurate, but I heard something about that. But uh, there you go. Making of Star Wars. Animal House, baby. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. John Belushi. Love John Belushi. Um, this movie is absolutely crazy. They parodied it on um, on Futurama with the, uh, the Mars College episode. Um... Yeah, not much to say about it. I love that cover. Look how busy that is. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, really funny movie. There you go. I got Mr. Bean. The Amazing Adventures of Mr. Bean. Rowan Atkinson is Mr. Bean. I have This is like the, the TV show, I think, from the UK. Uh, they started releasing it on uh, VHS here. Um, I, I tracked this down because of the movie he was in. Because I had never heard of the character before. But... Um, I like the I like the movie the one where he he was like the art uh, the there was like art theft or something in the movie I don't remember what the movie was about but I remember the character and I liked the character and uh, I tracked down some tapes and uh, I liked it it's very funny I think it was like an early uh, like so, an early time when I was introduced to like British humor which is very different from our humor <laughs> but um, I I do like the character Mr Bean uh, fun fact. Um, that I learned about him. He does, he very rarely speaks in his, you know, comedy. And I found out about that because, um, apparently he, uh, like Rowan Atkinson, I don't remember exactly what the thing was. He was either shy or he stuttered or something. So he made the character sort of just kind of emote. Like he, like when he speaks, he's like, rah, 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 rah. and, um, that's kind of how he got over, whatever problem he had that I, I have forgotten about. But, uh, yeah, uh, cool story. Love Mr. Bean. A lot of people do. Uh, Apollo 13, Houston, we have a problem. Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, uh, Bill Paxton was, oh, wow. Gary Sinise, Ed, Ed Harris, wow. This was a big movie that came out. Uh, that's where uh, Houston, we have a problem came from. But, yeah, it was uh, the next Apollo mission, and it didn't go so well. And that's, that's the premise. <laughs> they had to get back to Earth real quick. The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. This is when uh, Tim Allen kills Santa Claus. And then he has to take over as Santa Claus. That is the plot of this movie. He, he makes Santa Claus fall off the, sh the, the roof. And then he becomes Santa Claus. Uh, it... Very interesting movie. Um, I like the idea of Santa Claus being like a mantle that has to be passed down, which uh, it has been done in a lot of other movies as well. But uh, this one in particular, I, I do remember quite a bit of it. Like he started to slowly turn into Santa Claus, like the beard kept forming, even though he was shaving it off. It just like grew back instantly and he started getting fatter. And there was also another, like a divorce it's a plot line with his family. That was a big thing in the 90s, divorce. Like, like every family movie had like a divorce storyline. I don't know, maybe divorce became popular back then. I don't know. But anyway, here's Starship Troopers. Love this movie also. Uh, Paul Verhoeven, who does uh, who did um, Total Recall and, uh, and Robocop. Uh, this was based off the book, which is, has nothing to do with the book, apparently. Uh, but it is still very good. Um, really uh, cool effects. It's just if you like to see things get shot, <laughs> you love with space guns. This is your movie right here. Um, they did like sequels to this movie too, and they weren't as good. 
There's also an animated series called Roughnecks, which is also really bad. And um, but uh, and, you know, we still got that first movie. Uh, fun fact: there was actually an anime from the '80s based off the original book, and it's actually more accurate to the book. Although I've seen it, and it's excruciatingly boring. <laughs> Not enough killings. Not enough bug busting. There you go. Jim Carrey once again in the mask. And apparently I ruined this tape too to make pogs. Oh, God. Um, the mask. Based off the comic. That it was insanely violent and disturbing. And then you have the family movie. Which is fun. Because he's like a Looney Tunes man. And he, he hits the bad guys with a mallet. And... He does, like, this is, like, the quintessential Jim Carrey to me. Like, he, like, the way he emotes and does his lines and moves, like, this is, this is Jim Carrey. This is how I remember Jim Carrey. Um, but, yeah, The Mask, really cool. They made a sequel to it. The sequel's terrible. Uh, there was an animated series, though. The animated series wasn't bad, either. Uh, fun fact, also, going back to Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura also had an animated series and the the animated series for these two crossed over. You get both Jim Carrey's in one cartoon. What more could you possibly want? There you go. Uh, we have Indiana Jones and the temple of doom. Um, probably the lesser of the three Indiana Jones movies or the three original Indiana Jones movies. Uh, but one I, I remember seeing a lot on TV uh, I guess because they, they, I think they geared it a little bit more towards like a younger audience. Uh, so, cause it was, there was like wacky stuff going on in it. And, uh, you know, he had a little kid sidekick. It's a shame short round never returned for any other Indiana Jones stuff. I liked him. Um, uh, her, we can do without. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lady only in picture. Cause she's banging director <laughs> or something. I forget the story. What, what her, her was. Uh, but uh, weirdly, this was a very violent movie too. I mean, you had Molaram who ripped people's hearts out and yeah, I mean, but it's a good Indiana Jones movie. I think, um, I think last crusade overall is my favorite one, but, um, they're all really good in their own right. This one, probably not as much. I had some good sets, uh, good acting, a lot of fights. The, the, the minecart scene was really good, but, um. And it's Indiana Jones. What more do you want? Last of the Mohicans. This might be one of my dad's <laughs> that I took by accident. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, Last of the Mohicans, uh, based on the book. I remember watching it once. And I don't remember a whole lot about it. Because, it's, I don't know, like, when I was a kid, like, westerns and, like, early American stuff never really appealed to me that much. Um, it does more so now, but... Uh, I never really got into it. I think I had to do a book report on the book. And that's why I, I watched the movie. <laughs> uh, nobody knew the nobody knew the difference. But anyway. Uh, okay, so we have Beethoven second. And then we have Beethoven. When uh, the dog movies started to become big. Um, Beethoven was absolutely adorable. I mean, how could you how could you say no? How could you say no? Look at him. He's great. A uh, comedy movie with dogs and a sequel that was oh, and a sequel that was okay from a movie that was okay. Beethoven also had an animated series. I don't know if you guys knew that. I didn't know that forever. But yeah, he did. X-Files the movie from the 90s, not the more recent one. Is it called like I Want to Believe? I think that was the one that was called because of the, you know, the the poster. Uh, I don't remember a whole lot about, I remember, I'm a big fan of the X-Files. I remember watching it all the time. I actually don't remember a whole lot about this movie in particular. Probably aliens were involved, maybe. I don't know. The show was good. The movies, I guess, were forgettable, but there you go. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's go through these in a particular order here. Uh, does anybody remember this movie? <laughs> Nine months with Hugh Grant. <laughs> uh, I I this is doesn't seem like the kind of movie I would like, but I remember laughing at this quite a bit. Uh, it's Hugh Grant. He's like uh, about to become a father, and he like he can't handle it. It's wacky, and um, he has a best friend uh, who's played by Tom Arnold. And there's a scene 
in the movie where they, they're like shopping for baby stuff and there's like this bootleg Barney character that comes up to them and starts harassing them and they, they beat the shit out of him <laughs> in the middle of the store. Um, there's also a really funny scene where they're driving to the hospital when she's, she's about to have the baby and, oh, 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 I forgot. Um, is he on the, no, he's not. Robin Williams was also in this movie. He was the doctor who was hilarious, of course, because it's Robin Williams. I don't know how well it would hold up today, but for some reason I have it. So there you go. Dick Tracy. I loved Dick Tracy when it first came out. Nobody knew who Dick Tracy was at the time. And then suddenly this movie came out by uh, Touchstone, partially owned by Disney, I believe. And um, it was awesome at the time, at least. Uh, great makeup effects, great cast. You had Warren Beatty, um, Madonna uh, was in it, uh, freaking Al Pacino was in this, um, Dick Van Dyke was in it, I think, who else, who else was in this movie, uh, looking at the back here, uh, look at, look at that, look at those, look at that makeup effect, I mean, come on, that is awesome, that is perfect, like, 1930s gangster comic book, like, the, the colors, the visuals in this movie are great, um, Dustin Hoffman was in this, too, I, I remember now, um, but, yeah, I, I, Really loved this movie. It was great. I think it still holds up fairly well, but uh, that might be just be my opinion. It's a shame they never tried to bring Dick Tracy back in some form. I, I feel like it, it could work again, given the right, you know, given to the right people. But um, I think they, they did a really good job with this one. And uh, it made me learn about Dick Tracy, so that's good. Grumpier old men. <laughs> from the sequel to grumpy old men um again i don't remember a whole lot about you got jack lemon and walter Matthau again who is uh we already saw him as as mr wilson and dennis the menace um but yeah you had other and margaret sophia lorraine good actors um pretty funny movie if you just like you know old men and shenanigans you know uh, i don't remember a whole lot about this there was like something about fishing and there was a dog that was like terrible and I think he was like it, it, they were like fighting and so, or something I don't I don't remember. Um we have Terminator 2 Judgment Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger, arguably one of the best sequels of all time. This are up there with like Aliens. Um I don't know what else to say about it. I think this movie still holds up very well. Uh the the effects in it like practical and even like some of the CG effects, I think still hold up pretty well. Um, but yeah, Terminator two judgment day, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, the, the heartbreaking end of this movie was absolutely, de absolutely devastating because uh, it, it was this, you know, he's the Terminator. He's this action star he shoots. And then they had this moment where he has to go away and then John Connor's crying and he goes, I know now why you cry, but it is something I can never do. I was like, oh, and then they lower him into the, into the, the liquid and oh, such a good movie. Why can't movies be this good anymore? Um, speaking of why can't movies be this good anymore? Jurassic Park. Um, the only good Jurassic movie, in my opinion, I think Jurassic World was okay. Like it was, I think that was a decent sequel to this. Unlike the other sequels, despite, you know, the, the Lost World having Jeff Goldblum. The third movie is garbage. You can skip that one. Um, and uh, the sequel to Jurassic World is also garbage. You can skip that one as well. It, not entirely garbage, but, you know, there was some good things about it. But nothing has topped the wonder and amazement that was Jurassic Park, the, the original 90s movie. I, I don't even have anything negative to say about it. Maybe the maybe the CGI doesn't hold up that well, which I think is to be expected, but overall, this, this movie is fantastic. Um, speaking of dinosaurs, the Flintstones. <laughs> um, this movie, uh, I still really like. I think the casting is great. Some people argue um, Rosie O'Donnell as Betty wasn't that great, and Maybe there was some better choices, but you know she was a, she's a comedian. She she made it work. Um, but the casting is great. I mean, look at that. 
That is that is live action Flintstones. I mean, how could you go wrong? Uh oh, my battery's dying. Hold on one second. Sorry about that, folks. I had to replace the uh, the, the pterodactyl that's inside my camera that runs my battery or some Flintstones reference. Anyway, Flintstones. Um, I don't remember where I left off with this. <laughs> uh good good cast good visuals cool practical effects uh, this is about as close as you can get to like original flintstones i guess in live action then there was the sequel the raviva rock vegas which i never saw and i heard was bad so i'm probably not gonna say it so anyway there's that here is one of my favorite robin williams movies of all time toys this movie does not get enough <clears throat> enough credit for being weird and have surreal visuals and just overall just being very interesting even though the plot was is kind of uh kind of simple and uh, a little maybe even a little cheesy but man the 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 direction of this movie is crazy if you've not seen this movie i hi highly recommend it um good movie to watch around christmas time too just pretty much because of the the title but um yeah not much else to say about this movie other than it's weird and I love it. Uh, all right, so now we're going to get into uh, the last couple of tapes here. We have uh, Hardware Wars Special Edition. The Farce is Back. I don't know what this is. Uh... Oh, is this... Is this Turkish Star Wars on VHS? The critics are raving about this hilarious parody. Oh, it's a par oh, no, it's a parody. <laughs> I saw that like grainy looking Star Wars. I thought it was Turkish Star Wars. No, um, just like the farce of back and just like the big screen cousin Star Wars, it too has been redigitized, remastered. Um, the year was 1977. This little spoof became the highest grossing short of film of all time. Wow, I don't think I've ever actually seen this, huh? Space balls, it is probably not, but uh, maybe it's all right. At the time, people seemed like, what is that? Is that the Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz? What is it? That, that robot back there looks like it belongs in something else. And then there's like Cookie Monster. What is this fever dream? <laughs> I might have to watch this and find out for sure. Uh, but now we're moving into Star Wars. Oh, the tapes are falling. Now we're moving into Star Wars. Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Uh, might have been one of the last VHS tapes I bought because uh, at the same time I also bought the uh, DVD because uh, that was about the time DVDs started coming out and um, yeah uh, I'm actually surprised at how good a condition the 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 case is for this it's practically flawless as if it was never touched even though it was purchased and um, yeah uh, it's Phantom Menace. It's not a... It, uh, okay, look. This, the prequels are bad, but I can see why they're enjoyable. <laughs> There's parts that I like. Uh, it did give us Clone Wars, which is great, but uh, yeah, no. The, the prequels are not bad. The prequels are bad. Sorry. It, it was not a, floor, a, a slip. I promise. But now we have the original trilogy. Star Wars, uh, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Unfortunately, I think this Return of the Jedi is from a different set. So that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, what is cool, though, is that these are original Star Wars before the special editions. So this doesn't have all the wacky CGI and extra crap that they insisted on putting in Star Wars. And never releasing the originals in any form, not even as like a DVD extra or something. I don't know why you would do such a thing. At least, you know, give people the option to see how they were original. But we have the VHS tapes for as long as VHS tapes last. Um, these are sacred. These must be preserved. I'm sure the original versions of Star Wars are well preserved online by the community. Uh, but we do have the tapes. I do really like the artwork, of course, for, you know, the originals. This, you just can't beat that. It looks so good. Look at that. Return of the Jedi, by the way, uh, my favorite Star Wars movie. I know it's not a popular opinion, but uh, I, I remember, I think I watched it before the other two movies. So I kind of have a little bit of a, uh, like, maybe biased towards it. But 
I don't know why people hate on this movie so much. Return of the Jedi is great. It's everything comes together, everything wraps up, or at least we thought it was wrapping up. But then you know, I'm not going to get into Star Wars discussion. Okay, the point is these are the originals. They're great, and they must be preserved. So that is uh, my collection of VHS tapes, mostly from when I was a kid, and uh, I have a lot. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of cleaning up to do, but um, hopefully this video was uh, fun to watch for people. Uh, I don't know how many people are going to be very interested in this, but uh, uh, it was a lot of fun for me seeing all these old tapes. I mean, you know, now it, after this we had DVD and then Blu-ray and now everything's on streaming. Well, not everything is on streaming, but um, I don't know. Just like with uh, James Rolfe in his video, as I mentioned earlier, there's just something about the VHS just on your shelf like really how could you not love that <laughs> just seeing the the big letters the big logo i know it doesn't seem like a whole lot but uh th there is something about the old vhs tapes that keeps bringing us back maybe to a simpler time when we didn't have a pandemic and other stuff okay we're not getting political either okay we're gonna end the video <laughs> so thanks for watching if you made it this far um be sure to give me a like be sure to comment uh, and subscribe and check out my other videos. Um, let me know uh, if any of the videos that I showed that I said I never saw were any good. I'll be very interested to check that out. But yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, I will see you guys later.